And he goes, I know where you're going with this. He said, here's the deal. It's taken me a year and a half to put this staff together. And we're the Saturday Night Live of radio. He said, there isn't a bad shift. Every one of my DJs is exactly where they should be, and they're great. He said, they're all going to have a job when they come back, and I'm afraid I won't have a position for you. And I looked at him, and I said, Rick, when you hear me on the air, you'll give me a job. And he said, okay. And so I, well, I, I, went, I went on the air, I quit KNEC, and I loved KNEC so much. And the people there, Norm McBride, the morning guy, and Jimmy Christopher, the, the uh, program director, I didn't want to steal any audience from but them. But you did. Because they had a little, only a little signal. So I changed my name from Dick Shepard, and I didn't know what to call myself. And even I went on the air that day, and I still didn't know what to call myself. And I'm flipping desperately through the Los Angeles Times, and I see Robert Hilburn, the critic. And I'm like, Richard Hilburn? No, no, no. And I wanted to go back to Richard from Dick. Richard Hill, but no, no, that's not going to work. It's as bad as Richard Shepard. I want something else. And I see Blade Runner. It's going to open in two weeks. I didn't know what the movie was about. No one knew. It hadn't opened yet. It was going to open in two weeks' time. So I thought, Richard Blade, that would work great. <laughs> so I, this was when newspapers were yay big, right? So I drop it on the floor, and the song's finishing. And I come on the air, and I go, uh, now that was Flock of Seagulls and Telecommunication, but the fans call it Telecom. Uh, by the way, this is not Jed the Fish. This is me. I'm sitting in for Jed the Fish. He's in Hawaii right now. My name is, and I'd forgotten because I was so panicked that everyone in <laughs> everyone in LA was listening. I looked down and the papers folded. Oh, I was going to call myself Richard Runner. Sorry. Oh, because Blade Runner. Blade, Blade Runner. Richard Runner. And I was going to steal the RR of Rolls Royce. I thought that would be a great thing, you know, right. and all that. Richard but Runner. But you forgot. Yeah, but I forgot. And I look down and it's folded and it just says Blade. And I went, I'm Richard Blade. And this is OMD Electricity. And I started the song and I went, oh, Richard Blade, I guess I'm stuck with that. So that's how that came and about. And that was it. That was it. So this took off. You While you were there, you really showed him. Like people wanted to listen to you. They had no other choice than to give you a job. Well, yeah, yeah kind of. What happened that first day? was uh, Elvira and Danny Elfman were going to follow me. Elvira was going to do the um, evening show, and Danny was going to do the afternoon show. So I was on till noon, and then Danny was going to be in for Jed the Fish, because uh, I was in for Denny, Denise Westwood. And then for Freddie Snakeskin, it was going to be Elvira. And so I do my three-hour show, get to noon, say goodbye, see you tomorrow, 12.05 rolls around. No, 12.10. No, no, Danny no first. Danny. No, Danny. So then the hotline rings and this voice comes on. He goes, hey, who's this on the air? And I, I said, uh, it's Richard Blade. I'm, Richard Runner. Uh, yeah, Blade. Yeah, 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 Richard Blade. And he goes, oh, this is, this is Danny. He said, I said, oh, cool. Are you on your way? And he said, no, I, ca I can't get in today. He said, we're rehearsing for a tour and Johnny Vatos has this thing that he needs us to do and johnny was the drummer and so i'm gonna you miss today can, can you fill for me so i said sure I, i'll fill so hang up do another three hours so now i've done six hours on the air and get to the end of the six hours and say thanks so much bye and then it's now three o'clock at 3 10 comes no elvira so I walk out. Fire, so, where are you? Yeah. So I, that's exactly what I said to the girl at the front desk. I said, have you heard anything from Elvira? She goes, oh, you didn't get the message. So no. And she said, she's running late. She's taping her Mistress of the Dark for Channel 9 right now. So she won't You're be. You're filling in for that. Yeah. So I did nine, nine, hours. nine hours straight. And in the final hour of my show at 530, 525, actually, I'm reading an ad for the Parrot Place in Van Nuys. And it's a live commercial, and they had uh, Green McCall's for sale that weekend for forty nine ninety five. And I'm reading this live ad, and this white haired guy walks in the studio and goes, "Where's Snakeskin?" And I hit the mic off. I go, "I'm on the air right now." And I turn it back on. And so if you go on down any time this week through Sunday night, where's Snakeskin? I need to talk to him. And I go, "He's not here. He's in Hawaii." And I turn it back on, and I said. Uh, so go and get these McCalls. And it's not just McCalls on sale. I want snakeskin. Where can I get him? And I turn it off and I said, please, I'm doing a live commercial. And I turn it back on and carry on reading. 
And he goes, I want snakeskin. I went, get the fuck out of this studio or I will throw you out. And he looks at me and I turn it on and finish the live read. Finish my show, six o'clock. Pat Welsh, the general manager, comes up and he goes, you were on for nine hours. And I said, yeah. And he goes, sounded pretty good to me. And I said, great. And he goes, I want you to meet someone. So he takes me back to his no. office. And I've met Pat Welsh before, the general manager, right. uh, just in passing when I was doing the spots for the um, radio station. And I walk in. And the white-haired guy is sitting behind Snake Pat. skin. No. The guy who said. No. He, the one who was say, ask, asking for Freddie Snake skin. Yeah. yeah. He's sitting behind Pat's desk Jesus. in Pat's chair. And I walk in with Pat. And he looks at me. And then he turns his eyes from me. And he stares at Pat because he doesn't want to look at me. And he goes, ask the kid why he told me to fuck off. And Pat goes, why? Did, I said I heard him. And I just. Don't know how I did it, but I stepped forward and put my hands on the desk and I put my face in his face. And I said, as far as I know, in radio, and I've worked for two other radio stations, the only way a radio station makes money is by selling commercials. If a stranger walks in on my show and interrupts a commercial, the station's not going to get paid. 